Yes, hello, and welcome to Release the Creative, your favorite show about creativity, cognition, and on this week, teacher said what now? What did the teacher say? Uh, that's the entire point. If, you're, <laughs> if, you, if, if you've ever watched Charlie Brown or Peanuts, which if you're alive, you've seen. You know what's strange? I wonder if our children are familiar with Charlie. No, my kids are. Are your family, kids familiar with Charlie? Not like they might recognize the characters visually, but no, I don't think they've seen. Much I wonder what the I wonder what the Peanuts divide is, because like our generation, it was it was so overplayed, it was everywhere. Yeah, yeah, and now it's an exclusive, uh, you know, streaming. It's on one of the streaming services. You know, like just we just haven't watched. It. Interesting. Like I made sure to show my kids the Great Pumpkin and the the Christmas episode and like all that different stuff, but my my whole point is there like. In Peanuts, they had the joke of all adults sounded like a French horn or a trombone or, a, yeah, some, or something like some, some form of brass instrument. And uh, specifically uh, teachers and parents, because when you're a child, you have learned to to drown out your parents. And as an adult, you learn to drown out your boss. Yeah. Or certain friends that you just zone out. You, you zone out. And some of that is by choice. Some of it is not, actually. It's interesting that there's a there's a fun cognition point to that day. But today, I really just kind of we're, we're talking about how some of that's your fault and some of it just isn't. Your brain just starts to just shut off. And when information information you need, the nuclear launch codes, sir, are. I wonder if I turned left the iron on. Did I leave the iron on? There there's types of information, even information we need and we are looking for if it is presented along the wrong vertical. Uh, across the wrong vertical or across the wrong type, we're never going to remember it. Like, you know, I don't remember it unless I write it down or I don't remember it unless I hear it or I don't remember. It. And there are all these different learning styles. And so today it's it's uh, mostly a conversation, but it's. Um, and I feel the 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 opportunity to point out. So this is also the time that we're talking about learning styles and communication styles is also the very first time we're doing this live. We're doing this live on Podbean, Facebook and YouTube, all simulcast. Um, so people that can be listening to this on Spotify and Apple on Apple iTunes um, on their on the podcast app, they can be watching this on YouTube live and watching. Hi. Um, they can be watching this on two different Facebook pages, both my book, The Very Best Bad Idea and um, on our release, the creative. Why I'm not streaming to the Glass River Media webpage is simply because I'm a bad businessman. Yeah, well, you know, it can't be everywhere. We, um, and the thing is that whereas it's all just us and it's the same product, it's the exact same product. Those are minutely different audiences that we have attracted through different mediums. The people that are following my book page may or may not also follow our podcast. And people that listen to our podcast may or may not know that we run a business. So yeah, in the past, you had to uh, know to seek out the podcast, you know, or the YouTube page in one way or another. And so what you're saying right now is that somebody is scrolling through Facebook and my beautiful face is what came up after a kitten video. I'm not going to say that you won over a kitten video. That's, uh, I, I, I'm just that's not going to happen. But I'm just saying that. That's yes, the order it, of operation. exactly. And the other thing that, you know, and so there's some algorithmic help here as well. And I don't want to go too down farther. Uh, YouTube specifically, not sorry, uh, Facebook specifically has been amping up live videos and live things like that. So before, if I made a short video and I put it up there for a while, it had to be less than three minutes because otherwise the user engagement was garbage. Then they realized that they could sell ads on it. So it had to be greater than three minutes and they would amp it. Yeah. Then they started doing this like Facebook TV and things and they started doing more live stuff. So they started amping those. So there are people. So I'm on TikTok. Maybe you had heard something about that. I, I see it in my sleep. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I talk about my book all the time on TikTok yeah. because I I do. I have two different accounts, one with about 2,500 followers, one with about 5,800 followers. And I talk about my book on both content. Recently, the audiobook, I was pushing the audiobook, and one of my longest followers, one of my people that talked all the time, they're like, holy crap, you have a book? Where do I find it? And I'm like, really? Yeah. Like, how did, how did you miss it? I mean... I feel like a jackass as much as I talk about it. Apparently not quite enough. But that's the point is that the, they had just missed those out algorithmically. They'd missed those TikToks where I talked about my book. Mm -hmm. So now we're starting to do this in some new ways. A, full disclosure, we're testing it. It may not work. But right now we're, we're we are uh, there's so much changing in the world. 
right now Facebook is really pushing lives and pushing things. So there are people that already know us. There are people that have been doing, you know, work with us for a decade that may not know we have a podcast because I'm finding people that have been following me for months and years didn't know that I had a podcast or they didn't know that I had a book. Yeah, this is episode, what, 38? 38. So we've been doing this every week since the height of the pandemic, since for seven months. It's been a while, yeah. And, and every week we haven't missed. I don't think we've missed a week. Nope. Every Monday for our th- late once or twice, but it's always been there <laughs> every week for 38 weeks. We have talked and I talked about my book. I had two different. I had a closed LinkedIn group at a public LinkedIn group at a closed Facebook group. I had a public LinkedIn, but I have a public page where it is streaming right now. And lots of people didn't know about it because again, learning styles, communication styles and media saturation and overload. If things aren't fed to you, at the right point on your audience journey, at the right time on your audience journey, in the right format on your audience journey, it is literally like trying to throw a dart at a dartboard that is like being moved around. Yeah, so for uh, all of our, you know, everyone who's been here for 37 episodes knows this, but for the people who are viewing this live for the first time, what- Oh, Roger Voter yells his mic, your mic might not be, thank you, Roger, your mic is apparently not working real well. Who's yours mine. You, are you hearing me in your I am not well I thought it was just just well no you're dead all right look give me a second here my bad thank you Roger how are you doing Roger Roger voter is a an old colleague friend and uh and co-worker of mine from my studio performance days yep you can hear me now? I can. See, you're the one with the earbud. This is kind of uh what the earbud is for that is in fact <laughs> what the earbud is for thank you Roger Thank you. Thank you, Roger. Do we know Roger? Or we do. Uh, Roger is from my uh, from my John Farr days. We used to uh, when we were doing live event productions. So he's, and, a, and, he's and a live lighting. a live guy. He's a live guy. So he notices things like I can't hear you. <laughs> <That's> the, <laughs> yes, that on a podcast you can't hear someone might be a uh, might might I'm, be a big deal. I'm glad we had his technical expertise there because uh, we missed it. <laughs> we did. Like it's crazy. Um, yeah. So, uh, so uh, yeah. To. Uh, to everyone watching live, including Roger, we are kind of trans- in mid transformation in the studio. The studio has been here for two years now, two years, yeah. and it has always been a we have a control room over there in the studio here. And we're slowly, uh, well, rapidly now transitioning so that everything can be controlled from here and there. Right. Doing it there or here was always kind of easy. We're trying to do both or either or anything you want and and so that is that's where we're working out the bugs <laughs> and and the thing is is that this is this half like we started doing live streaming Ooh, it's more than two years because i mean we, we all yeah, oh yeah when i say studio i mean literally this, this space this we've space. been doing it for four or five we've years we've been doing live streaming for five, uh, four or five years we started uh cory and i started on twitch and then we, you and i have been doing like a little bit of this and that and then the pandemic really brought live streaming from the 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 niche of gaming and and uh, and podcasts and really brought it forefront. Yeah, up, up until now, everything in here was very custom. We had to set up for every job specifically, and, right. and you know, much like a live event where you would go into a, a convention center or something. And we're like, we own the space. We shouldn't be resetting up again and again. So right, and so, but it's it's so interesting, kind of like tying it all back to this. You know, teacher say what is that? I did terrible in school, and I'm not an unintelligent person. I just I don't listen. Well, no, that's just true. I could just stop that sentence. I just don't listen. If you aren't interesting, I don't care. Mm-hmm. And, and, and you know, I'm ADHD, as is, you know, pretty much everyone my age. Um, I don't if if you don't ba- make it past my give a damn patent pending, that's a real word. Like if you don't make it past my give a damn, I don't care if you have the nuclear launch codes. There's a furry kitten and I'm going to pet it like <laughs> there's a dog with a fluffy tail. There's a dog with a fluffy tail. Your nuclear holocaust can wait, Mr. President. It has to hit us at the right point on our audience journey. And it has to be information that we are primed for, ready for. And again, give a damn. Mm-hmm. And and it's really fascinating right now. We're, we are at such a beautiful, amazing, mystical and it's not an explicit stream effed up time where we now have the ability to again, we are live on four different platforms right now. We have uh, I have people. Hello, Ravi uh, Rawi talking to us on Podbean. We have Roger talking to us on our YouTube channel. No one's made comments on Facebook, but I am literally juggling. I have the ability. We're going live on four different platforms. And you, you get to simultaneously simultaneously talk to all of them. Um, right. That's pretty cool. 
likewise, just like we always have, we always get, you know, a couple of dozen to a couple hundred comments and views throughout the week. These will still be viewable. So for those who really love that modern that that Monday morning engagement, they're like, oh, cool. I'm going to jump in and have some coffee with Jeff and Kirk. That'll now be a possibility. And for those who can't, they can watch it later. And it'll be largely the same show that it's been for the last 38 weeks. Yeah, the pod, pod, podcast is going to be there. Yeah, in, in the same general context and con- things. But what's really I don't want to be all meta. You know, the whole podcast is about the podcast, <laughs> although, yes, what's interesting about that from a creativity, cognition, communication standpoint is that information is only um, penetrative. That's not the word. Like, absorbable. Uh, mm-hmm. We only absorb the information that we're looking for. And that sounds really stupid. You're like, so we don't find let's when uh, any uh, what's the kind of the thing called where when you hear about something, then you see it everywhere, like everywhere. If, like right. if I were to tell you right now, you notice how there's not a lot of yellow cars on the road. I, I guarantee you in the next week, you're going to see a yellow car. <laughs> OK, you're, you're freaking me out right now. So uh, Natalie, um, my uh, mother, of my children, you know, friend, friend uh, she uh, she had a D, she she started a uh, a game with my kids mm-hmm. of yellow, green, not blue, three different colors of car. It was yellow and it's like slug bug. Mm-hmm. But if you see a car that is yellow, hurts a uh, Penske, they are, we very quickly that cabs and Penske's don't count yeah. because that does, that's just it doesn't count. <laughs> it's, cheating. And, it's cheating. But yellows, greens. And there's a third that I'm not remembering. Uh, yeah. What's what's unusual is uh, it was yellow, green. And I mean, Honestly, these days, red is kind of unusual. And, and we too. don't. And, and we like, if there's kind of an unspoken forest green, doesn't count. It's yeah. like the it's like the kiwi greens and stuff like that. And so I'll be driving along, and my kids will blurt out yellow because it's it's a. <clears throat> it happens enough. You just don't think about it. Yeah, but it's exactly like you say. It's we only see the information we are looking for. Now, if we were to go straight to an academic standpoint, this is called confirmation bias. Mm-hmm. You are literally blind to the stuff you aren't prepared for. Yeah. If we go to the men in black, this is just people don't want to know about the mysteries of the universe. Yeah. Uh, and again, it's a joke, but it's this, it's the same principle. Um, That's a learned thing, um, uh, learned or, or developed. But yet yeah, babies don't have that. And uh, yeah, that's why they're kind of freaked out by everything. <laughs> and so, yeah, as, as you age, you learn to filter stuff out because the world is just too busy. It's just too busy. And what's what's really strange is like so people with uh, certain forms of executive dysfunction, either autism, ADHD or certain other, you know, there's different diagnoses, have things like problems with like object permanence. Mm -hmm. So I have issues with object permanence, which is that if I cannot actively see it, it does not exist, (laughs) which is why I am cluttered is like and if someone moves something that I put somewhere and it is no longer there. It is gone forever. Yeah. You have to be able to look around the room and literally it is see it. like the number of times that I've lost my keys that were under a piece of paper and the paper is like mm-hmm. heaping like like it, my keys are on my desk. There is a piece of paper making a clear tent over a key shaped object. No, no, <laughs> there's no keys under that paper. Um, what's really cool in this modern era is that we are becoming more aware of, of cognition. Now, I talk about it in my book again. See me talking about my book. Uh, we all know what psychology, psychiatry, neurology, science. There's lots of different words that mean brain science. Mm-hmm. Cognition is specifically how we absorb information into like how, how yeah. it penetrates. And right now it's really cool. Cognition's almost become a little bit of a buzzword, which is unfortunate. But the reason that's cool is because we are finally understanding that there is a difference between information, education and cognition. They're not there. It's juggling. And the best information on the best ed- education still might not penetrate cognition or my, as my dad used to say, why could I tell you a scripture or a poem or a prose or give you the secrets to the universe, but you'll never remember it. But I stub my toe and scream shit just once. And that is all you will ever remember of me. And he's not wrong. Yeah, no, it's it, there's been, you know, so many school sub- subjects. Everyone has had a test where it's like, I can't remember, like, I can't remember the multiplication table or I can't remember, you know, right. the chemistry. But like, if you think about it, like, like you probably like depending on your age range, you, like you either remember every Pokemon or every Ninja Absolutely. Turtle villain or every, you know, it's like there's some there's some TV show you watch that, you know, every single detail to and yet you can't remember a math. Test. I to this day and I remember in high school, you used to tease me about this, which, again, it wasn't much of a tease. Like I thought it was funny, but like about how that I to this day can give you the intermost details, the director and the stars of every bad rom com made in the 90s. <laughs> like, hey, what was that movie with Sarah Michelle Geller and the like and the magical crowd? That would be simply irresistible. Yeah. What was the movie with like? I can I can do that 
it's been 25 years, Jeff, and I can still break down every bad 90s teen movie. <laughs> Ori is vo- uh, joining us from England today. Hello, Ori. How are you doing? An evening viewer. And, and, well, it's five hours. It's like two o'clock. Uh, afternoon viewer. <laughs> it's earlier in the morning than I think. It, it is. Yeah. Uh, I have some, some of her tea, actually, over there. I should make myself a cup of tea. Um, anyway, it's... It's, um, we accept the information that we find pertinent. We accept the information we find interesting. And where this becomes interesting from a podcast standpoint is, uh, or a marketing standpoint even, is where is it relevant? Why is it relevant? And where is it hitting on our audience journey? Mm -hmm. Um, so you're, you're just making me think of, you know, you said, uh, it's become a buzzword uh, cognition. Yes. Um, and what's interesting to me, I'm thinking back, you know, what was a buzzword that came and went and didn't have the impact that I thought it should <laughs> uh, is gamification, which everyone like five years ago was talking about gamification, yeah. which is like the kind of the, the best example I love uh, to give of that is I think it was the Nissan Leaf was an electric car. OK. Yeah. Um, and uh, it was either hybrid or uh, electric. I'm not sure. But I it, remember it, it was a uh, was supposed to save gas was the point sure. of buying this car. It's 100 percent electric. And, the, is the it Leaf electric? was 100 percent electric. And, uh, you know, with any of these things, the more. You know, driving slowly and predictably and accelerating slowly is more efficient. You know, sure. I, I had a hybrid where it had a little a little meter where it was I like your current gas mileage. Yep. And if you if you go slowly, it's like you're getting good gas mileage. And if you like really floor it, it's like, oh, you're getting bad gas mileage. You know, it's just right. a, like a, it was yeah. a dial on a car. Right. Um, what the Nissan Leaf did is it gave you on the dashboard a little virtual plant. Yeah, the it, sprout. Yeah. It was it was like um, a, a Tamagotchi where you had to care for this plant. And, and like if you were saving fuel or energy, sure. the plant bloomed and was like more healthy. And if you were driving really fast and, and accelerating and, you know, then the leaves would fall off of it. And so that was the, the game was the bet more fuel efficient I drive the better the garden looked. the better the garden little plant looks right and so like that was I thought like the best example of gamification where it's it's encouraging a behavior through playing a game while you're driving and it's not even like distracted driving you're not like staring at the plant it's I'm just, wondering if they got sued for that for the distra- distracted yeah, driving concept that, like, that's let's possibly. not turn driving into a game please but so that might not be a, like a long term example but at that time I read a bunch of articles where they're like everything's going to be like this and it really didn't I, go that way. And my question for you is, is that true? Because I will tell you that I, I joke in uh, I joke about this all the time that I am a slave to digital confetti. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Well, no. Digital confetti, man. You, I will do just about anything stupid. Here's the here's the break. The, the breakout. There's two ways to go with that. One is what I consider the fun way, which is the keep the plant alive or, you know, little, little things that are very obviously fun, engaging theme park like games sure the other way is the behind the scenes no social media is made to be addictive like sugar and it's shiny and it looks like candy and right. and they don't want you to think about it and is that what happened to gamification i think companies so. realized oh we want to use the techniques but we don't want to make it obvious no so like so example, we're gonna bury it i may I, I don't know if i should like I don't care enough. So I am a Sheets member. Sheets, for those of you who are, say, in England, Sheets is a gas station that's trying to be a subway. Anyway, subway being, it's, if it's, you're still in England, it's trying to be both a gas station and, and, a, fast food and a fast food restaurant. Yeah, and I love it. It's kind of half and half. I'm absolutely not casting shade. Sheets, I love you. I <laughs> super do. I have right now 3,800 Sheets points, which is an obscene number. Yeah, the points system is an example of gamification, but one I consider not super fun, but it works. No, no. So this is where it gets fun. The other day I was like, you know what? I don't have much money on me. I'm going to go trade in. Uh, I'm going to again, repeat. I'm going to say this slower. I don't have much money today. I'm going to go get a free sheets meal so that it is free. Yeah, I get there and I'm looking through my my app on my phone. It was like a burger is 750 points. I can get two. Cool. And um like a an apps platter is 750 points score a drink is 800 points gotcha i'm gonna get this whole huge meal for free i go up i order i go to pay and he's like cool that'll be like 25 dollars." and i'm like but no it, it should be blah blah and he's yeah. like oh no i'm sorry you're at the friend level those are the points at the fiend level so it's not that i didn't have the points it's that those points you're are only sufficiently uh, promoted i in I, rank <laughs> correct i was at the wrong rank so there was there was like uh, user friend 
freak. That's what it was, the freak level. And I was still like 600 points short of freak level. I've been to sheets, back to sheets every day since, because damn it, I'm going to get to freak level. You're going to win, yeah. I am going to. This is the stupidest thing I've ever said out loud. I know what they're doing, so, and yeah. it still works. It, this is this is the problem, is that what I think is a pretty cool idea has been co-opted to be completely profit-driven. It's how do we get people to spend more money in our restaurant or our store that's what gamification is. Absolutely. And, and, and that's and, always and, what gamification was. Well, going no, to. and I understand that that's going to be a use of it. Like, I do understand that's going to be used. Oh, I just think there should the be leaf additional. Wasn't, right. Uh, yes. Yeah, the leaf wasn't about profit. It was about the use of the car. In, in a little way, it markets the car a little way. But sure. once you sold the car, what's the point of the game? Well, I just to save energy. So it was a car company trying to get you to save energy, which really doesn't impact the car company directly. And that's where. I think that's where it went. Yeah. Is that it, it no longer made any sense. And. Uh, yeah, like they didn't it wasn't there wasn't a strong motive for them to keep doing it. But that's where I think a Walt Disney like character, a, a Howard Stark like character, you know, in the modern world could make products that use gamification more for those types of uses. And it's not like I understand it'll be used for profit. I understand Sheets wants you to promote up and spend more money on hamburgers like sure, fine, jerks. do that, do that. But like, why is that? The o- why is that the only use of it? You know, like there should be so. Okay. More. <laughs> this is not super off the topic of today, but if you've followed me on any of my shows on Twitch or this one previously, tangents are sort of my bag. Yeah. Um, I want to. I want to. I want to pivot on something and ask you a question uh, that you are actually uniquely not qualified, educated in answering. Okay, so it's going to be about Star Trek. <laughs> no, it's going to be about Apple. But <laughs> okay. that would be the other one. Yes. Apple and Star Trek would be the two things. Um. Why is Apple now? So to preface this, I'm not unaware that Apple products are twice the cost. I'm not I'm not unaware of that. But Apple seems to be uh, immune to that concept where like right now they're doing the whole thing with the update where they're they're disabling uh, the the pixels and the tokens. And so they're making it harder for the Facebooks and the Googles to track data Right. in that we have proven, proven, undeniably proven that data is the gold mine of current. Yeah. Why does Apple give absolutely no dams about the gold mine? In fact, they're like like they're cutting off the well water above the like how why are they not profiting on the mil- gold mine and, and I know so some of the, yeah. skipping over the what you originally said is well they're in the business of selling hardware. Right. And 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 that's the easy answer, but it's a glib answer because no, they have been trying really hard to grow their online services. Absolutely. They want you to buy iCloud, they have Apple TV, yeah. they do music and like they really do want you to be giving them money for services too. Sure. Um so that gets you back to the question, why? Um and I, I think they're thumbing their nose at the gold mine. Uh, I appreciate it for the record. Before I get into the explanation, I, I think, yes, it's a gold mine, but there's also a silver mine. I think Apple's aiming for the silver mine. And here's the thing. This is your, you know, it's the Wayne Gretzky skating to where the puck is going to be slash uh, uh-huh. uh, Bill Gates said something along the same lines of like, if we know this is where technology is going, why don't we go there now? I think Apple is and they sometimes are very good at this, seeing the future in the fact that the way companies track our data to the next generation will be unacceptable. And it doesn't matter if Apple wasn't pushing for it, it's going to happen eventually. And so Apple is seeing that and they're seeing that, okay, the gold mine is eventually going to be poisoned and it's going to be arsenic in the water. It'll be outlawed. It'll be blocked off. We won't be able to go to the gold mine. Fortunately, there's a silver mine here. So why not be the first ones to go for it slash first slash let everyone know we're the most excited about it. So like when it starts happening, Apple and silver mine are synonymous. And and to clarify terms here, what I mean by gold and silver mine is gold mine is what is currently done online, which is you are tracked out the yin yang, which is if you read the story about this is years old, but the the girl who found out she was pregnant from Target, like her dad I found told, it. I, yes. you told that on your story. I, I told that on my stories. Yeah. Where yes, the stuff she was searching for online caused Target to send her baby materials in it the mail. It was the stuff she purchased on her red card. Yeah. And, yeah. and so her dad found out her his daughter was pregnant from Target advertisements because it was so hyper yeah. so that's that's what we're referring to as the gold mine is right. like the companies know everything about you and they're going to market exactly to you when you when you uh, search for one little thing online you see ads for similar products for weeks on every web page not Absolutely. just on that site but, you yeah know, the rebranding is so uh, everywhere yeah. um that's that's the gold mine right right what and people say oh it's 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 the way that advertising works well right now no 
in the past, you bought a TV ad and then you did some surveys to find out if it worked or right. you put an ad in the newspaper yeah. and you're like, well, we're going to run this ad in the newspaper in this zip code and this ad in the newspaper and that, that zip code. That, that's how you targeted stuff was sure. not for the individual, but for regions. Right. And so the idea that what Facebook does now is the only way it has to work. Right. Well, it's not true because we used to do it a different way. And that's what Apple is saying is saying the way it used to work, we can still do that in a digital way. Um, and that's where you, you see some pushback on the people say, oh, Apple tracks all this stuff, too. Yeah, but they're not tracking individuals. They're tracking demographics and groups. And yeah, yeah, they know that people who are driving cars through this zip code are should get advertisements for sheets, for example, absolutely, because they're driving near sheets and we know they go near sheets. And so we're going to advertise to them. But neither sheets nor Apple knows who that individual is. And so that's the what I'm calling the silver mine is it's as it, Apple yeah. says, we can still do a lot with data, but in a different way. Gotcha. And 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 yeah, maybe it's not as profitable, but if people start pushing back and let and I mean, the EU is always ahead of on this kind of stuff. Europe is pushing back on it hard. It's going to get to where what Apple has built is what everyone will have to do. And they'll have been there first. So I love that you said that because you set this up perfect. Ori, who lives in England, yes. which is no longer a member of the EU hashtag Brexit. But yeah. like, let's still, you know, <laughs> uh, she just said it's risky to profit off data, legally speaking, because even if you're uh, even if what you're doing is legal, some prosecutors and judges who are against you will misinterpret complex data, uh, data laws, especially overseas laws. She then followed that up with. Apple would lose so much in bad publicity and legal fees. Facebook are suffering from bad publicity. And even though they're <clears throat> they're handling the data pretty well, I mean, we've seen Mark Zuckerberg in front of Congress. I have not seen Tim Cook in front of Congress. Yeah. And uh, there I mean, Apple has its own fights right now. They're involved with um, the App Store and, you know, the percentages they take. Give me my damn charger back. And, uh, you know, and yeah, and, and they remove ports. And so there's a lot of things that Apple is criticized for, but they have decided this is one they don't want to be this is a hill that they will not only not die on that they're like you know you guys have fun on the hill yeah like, so they're they're gonna avoid this one um yeah okay and uh yeah I, I think it'll pay off for them long term but uh there, there's still a few quite a few years left where they're kind of going their own on it it's it's really you know we took a little bit of a we took a little bit of a uh, a tangent because again hi i'm kirk uh it's what i do but it's it's I think it all really goes back to the whole face. You know, today's episode is called Teacher Says What? And it's we have to be, you know, Apple is Apple's assured that the hardware is the system and that they can feed with with minimal date and understanding and things like that, that the hardware is the way that they're going to deliver. Mm -hmm. Google and uh, Amazon and everyone else is all based on user data. And that is get, there are people that. Uh, you know, my book came out a year ago uh, on Friday and we were set to have our audiobook come out on Friday. But Bezos be tripping. It's going to take some time. There is an MP3 available if you if you're like interested to email in my audiobook, Kirk. Like, if you'd like to email me, uh, please do. I will absolutely happily get you a copy of the audiobook. But it is it is lost in the ethers of Amazon right now, uh, uh, pending approvals um, because of Bezos be tripping. Um, but that all having been said, like when my book came out a year ago, the num I get asked no less for 52 weeks, even during a pandemic where no one was going anywhere. I got asked twice a week. Hey, is it on audio? Like, I don't read books mm -hmm. like yeah. or and that's one of the reasons we started the podcast 38 weeks ago is that it, it wasn't on audiobook yet. There are people that even though they want the information, they need the information, they have the information. Here's the information. Um, they are so primed for it. Um, they are so primed for it, or I hadn't even thought of this. Ori is a great example. Ori, who's in the comments right now, is blind. Mm -hmm. um, she's been a friend of mine. We met on TikTok. She's been great. My book doesn't technically. That, that's not helpful. Um, but so yes, Ori, I will send you a copy today for just being awesome. That that's happening because you have been. You've been asking about me like for the whole time. Yeah. Um, my brain just completely shut off. But my point is that you have to feed you have to feed people across their. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, how they're primed for the information. If you get you, you could just say, well, some people want to listen, some people want to read, but it gets down to even like I only listen to podcasts and stuff in the car, in when, the I'm car. when I'm driving. And yeah. I know I know a lot of people who don't. They will do it while they're cleaning or while they're you know doing something at home. Um, I. Yeah, I don't know what it is. I don't I just don't listen to even music. I don't listen to some at home. It's a 
car activity. And so that's just kind of a quirk <laughs> of mine. But I'm sure a lot of people are similar right. where they consume certain things in certain ways. No. And like we we have had people that I know bought the book. I know people that bought the book to support us and support me. And they were like they were so excited for the book. But they were like, hey. Let me know when the audiobook comes out. I'll buy that too. But but I'm not gonna not gonna read this. I'm not gonna read it. <laughs> and it wasn't. And again, it's it's. And there are other people that I've talked to on different podcasts. They're like, yeah, I'll definitely pick up the audiobook. But no, I have to. I have people that bought the ebook because I did a huge sale on the ebook. Mm-hmm. But then bought a physical copy too. They're like, hey, I bought the ebook because it was on sale. But uh, that's just so I can have it like on the on the go. Yeah. I need the physical copy. Hmm. Um, so they can highlight it and rip it up. And, you know, I'm not bothered by people who bend pages, so bend pages right away. But it's it's we have to present information to people where they are. The number of times like that I am on TikTok and I will see someone like, come over to my YouTube. No, <laughs> I'm, I'm here. I'm on TikTok. I'm yeah. on I'm on TikTok. And they'll break it down and they'll give me little snippets. And they're like, if you want the full episode, you should come listen to my podcast. No. <laughs> and again, I do the same exact thing. So you know, there's a ton of content creators that I really enjoy that are doing what we're doing. Like I'm on eight different platforms and I'm like, yes, but this is the one where I want to see you. <laughs> like, right. <laughs> exactly. Like um, it's it goes back to the, I, you know, have you ever been back in high school? It was even worse in elementary school. And you'd see a teacher like at the grocery store and it mm-hmm. completely like rock your world. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I've heard of this. I don't think it ever happened to me, unfortunately. Really? Yeah. It happened to me every once. It happened to me. I think I can think I remember it four or five times in my life where I was like at the mall and I looked over and there was Mrs. Krabappel coming out of Victoria's <laughs> Secrets. And that just 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 crushed my worldview. A. That's an underwear store and she doesn't wear underwear, but not like that, like in a in the other side, like, it, yeah. It, yes, it crushed my worldview that that these people were people because we are not we as a species categorize things so holistically. Um, so as we're trying to communicate, so to turn this to in, in, in kind of a pseudo summation, you know, we've talked about a lot of things from Apple to YouTube to to different platforms and different types and audio types. And what that means is if your audience and let's take this out of a business standpoint, let's take it to your middle manager and you want your boss to approve a project or you're a parent and you want your kid to clean their room or whatever, you can't present the information in the way you want to give it and think that's going to be well received. Right. You have to give information, all information, 100% of information, you have to present in the way that they are primed to receive it, not in the way that you prefer to give it. We see this a lot in debates, where people argue from their point of view. You're never going to win from your point of view. They disagree with you. You have to win, argue from their point of view, which makes it harder. You have to present information in the way that people are primed to receive it, not in the way that you are primed to send it. And in things like modern technology, we're multi-streaming to four different pl- uh, platforms right now. We can we can have our cake and eat it too a little bit. But this is still only audio and video there's still more that has to be done to get the message to people across all platforms and everywhere on their audience journey. Yeah. And uh, to end that, (laughs) I've got a a little treat here for our YouTube viewers. Okay. And uh, Kirk doesn't know about this yet. No, I don't. Um, We'll uh, we'll talk over this to to ruin it, but we'll we'll just kind of audio commentary here. And uh, for for those of us on YouTube, you're going to see it. For those of you listening on audio, maybe this will inspire you to head on over to YouTube and watch the end of the episode here. Or Facebook. They're on Facebook as well. But uh, yeah, here, let's take a take a look at. I'm so curious where this is going. No. (laughs) So what we're watching here. Explain this, Kirk. No. (laughs) No. Everyone log off now. No. So this is a uh, high school. Um, no, <laughs> that's my buddy, Pam. That's my basement in high school. And this this is a project done for the video class I was in. Uh, Kirk helped me with this. This was the year before he was in the class. That's me and my talk boy. Famed from the uh, Home Alone Home TV Alone commercials. Two movies. <laughs> no. And uh, that's my hand. I was 15. What this is, is in the 90s, the movie Scream was very popular. And yep. Scream itself was a parody of 
uh, horror movies. Right. And for some reason, we decided making a parody of a parody was the way to go. What pisses me off is a few years later, they'd make a movie called Shriek, if you remember what I did last summer. And it was this. It was this, but mine was better. Uh, <laughs> that's me in my basement. With your juggling knife. With my juggling knife. I hate you so much right now. This is amazing. <laughs> Me and the Doc Martens, because it was, no, those are my army boots. It was, in fact, 1997. Might have been 98. I can't believe this is, I, I have wondered where this has existed for for a long time. I haven't so seen this I in got, 20 years. I got the VCR hooked up to the computer last week. I have not seen this in 20 years. Easily. This is my house I grew up in. So for those, uh, what am I wearing? I don't uh, remember oh, this cape. That's my Shakespeare cape. Okay, I was gonna say I did not have this cape. I don't know what this is. I went to the uh, the DC <coughs> Shakespeare Theater had a um, a yard sale once, and they were selling old costumes. So and Ori, that is me, the year you were born. <laughs> um, with my uh, wow. So, yeah, my daughter is almost this age now, not quite, but uh, almost. And I said, so, yeah, that's Kirk about your age, even though he looks half your age. <laughs> yeah, I was I, I was so a young looking kid. What is this? You're 15 or 16. I would have been if you were a junior. You were a sophomore. In high I would have sophomore. So I was 15, 15 and you look 11. I look every bit of 11. Look at my hair, Jeff. This is a crime against humanity. <laughs> a that I no longer have hair. <laughs> you used it all up in the 90s. <laughs> I did. I, I had so much hair in the 90s. And that's Pam with a pinky in the band. We were such a violent group. I think most teenagers are. Yeah. Executive producer helped Phil Harris. Wow. <laughs> disclaimer. <laughs> yes. This is this is where I learned that you should never put the, uh, the confidence monitor in sight of a... Because I keep looking down. <laughs> <laughs> Bat wielding homeowner Pam Sawyer. The middle part is in now, and and uh, you were just way out of Pam time. Sawyer remains one of the few reasons I'm still on Facebook. She does a, a good she, Facebook game. She does. A, <laughs> <laughs> I have been. I have. I yeah. I have not seen this in a hot minute. <laughs> um, <laughs> just uh, yeah. I'm. Uh, been going through the uh, the VHS tapes, and there will be many, many more to come over the next few weeks. That's uh, that's gotta, our summer project. You got to talk to people. Where, man, I had I miss my hair, man. <laughs> oh, my hair was so beautiful. So voluminous. Well, we will be back uh, live next week, and uh, yep. if you are not watching right now, you can watch this for the rest of the week for but, all those people who aren't watching. Yeah, right now. so we're going to be start doing this every at uh, 10 a.m. Monday morning uh, Eastern Standard Time. If you happen to be on the uh, you know West Coast, to that. Uh, early early 7 a.m. it's a commute show if you're in England it's uh, just after lunch after lunch cool and if you are somewhere in India it's a going to bed show awesome hey Roger I'm so glad you stuck around Ori <laughs> thank you so much we will see you next Monday and again tell your friends this is uh this is gonna be fun I'm, I'm excited for the new format yeah we'll see you soon okay bye bye Thanks for joining us here at Release the Creative. Kirk here would never say it to your face, but he thinks you should like and subscribe to us on YouTube. And Jeff is far too shy to admit it, but he thinks you should subscribe to us on your favorite podcast reader. Yeah, well, you're the one who's always saying that everyone should give us five stars on Apple Podcasts. Why do you have to make everything so difficult? <laughs>